Number eight, the diaphragm release, B8. And with your knees up, Karen, you can remember diaphragm is a back muscle, largely, and uh, I'm going to work costal arch in order to work the diaphragm. I'm not digging under the arch, but I have my thumbs and pads of my thumbs all along the rim of the costal arch. And then as she inhales, I follow her up, so like the bucket handle one, and I just wait as she exhales to open it up. So I get as much of that costal arch as I can. I'm standing on the opposite side so that it's opening outward. As she inhales, I follow it up and wait for her to inhale, or sorry, rather exhale out from under me. How is this, Karen? Fine. It's OK? You're taking up slack each time. We're taking up slack each time. Each time she inhales, I go a little farther and then just wait for her to drop out from under. So essentially it's a stretching open the dome of the diaphragm using the bones. So you're right on the ribcage. Right on the ribcage. And then I'll come around and do the other side. Doing okay there? Yeah, this is a tighter side. Okay. Now let's let's throw in another rectus one. Sure. About this one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. when, um, when you say don't go inside the costal arch. I'll borrow your um, book for a second. Thank, mm -hmm. thank you. You know, I, I've had other classes on the diaphragm as well. So what does that exactly mean? Because I know I know you're still pu pushing a little under. So at what, what level are you're just saying don't go much past the edge of where the rib is. In other words, don't try to go underneath. Is that mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. There's a lot of work that we used to do in rolfing, or maybe still teach in some places, this up under the costal arch. But there is the potential for damaging liver and organs, or it's delicate in there. And you can get an amazing release without having to do that. Um, so that's why I don't show it, because the potential for harm is there. And you can get everything you need to just like this. I don't, I don't dig around into people's diaphragms anymore in my private practice. So. And so the, the reason to release the, the diaphragm? diaphragm is because then it relieves the, the lower back, as well as breathing issues. Yeah. Breathing issues, uh, gastric issues, you know, even up in the pericardium, uh, kind of postural things have been through the, the core of the chest. All those will be helped by so if diaphragm relief. So like kind of pulled into this posture for the... Yeah. The yeah. Now there's two, there's two variations for the camera and for you guys. One is, and this is more my tendency, to have a closed front of the diaphragm, yeah, which this work will be really great for. The other, the other tendency is to have a closed back of the diaphragm, which that previous technique will be really great for, the 12th rib work. Mm -hmm. So people tend to, tend to be you know, closed front or closed back. But in either case, in some ways it's a diaphragm issue. One of the, um, the ideas that, that the class um, offered was to be working in whole sentences, you know, to not just to kind of jump in and do a little something and leave, but, you know, I'm starting, like I have a great start and a great finish, and this section that I'm working on is complete, so the client really feels, you know, they, they don't get lost, they're not just like, you're not just working on them, but you're having more of a dialogue and you're listening to the body, to their body, and you're saying something to it and it's you know kind of a complete circle